Hey everybody, welcome to Vacuum Wars. This video will be a recap of all the things that I learned from CES 2020 in Las Vegas about the latest trends in vacuum cleaner tech and robot vacuum tech in particular. I'm also gonna go through some of the specific releases from the exhibitors that were there and show you what was new and exciting with each of them. I'm going to try to continually update the links in the description to everything I mention as these products are released and let's get started. So CES stands for Consumer Electronics Show and it's the world's largest consumer tech trade show. People come from everywhere to see what's new with technology of all types, but I went there mainly to see what was new in the world of robotics and specifically with robot vacuums. Though there were a few other types of vacuums there as well as we will see. Let's first talk about the main trend that I saw, which was artificial intelligence being integrated with robotics. Some of you may have seen our review of the Echovacs 960, which in addition to the LiDAR or laser unit, which is used for navigation on the top, it included a front-mounted camera which was used to gather information about its environment and specifically to recognize and avoid obstacles that traditional sensors can't detect. That specific tech that we saw with the 960 that is using LiDAR for navigation and cameras for gathering info for the AI is a very popular idea with other types of robots, though the more heavy-duty robotics industries use 3D LiDAR, which is much more expensive and is not likely to be used on robot vacuums for a long time, if ever. But the point is that in the robotics industry in general, they were using LiDAR in combination with cameras for the AI. Though Echovax is still the only robot vacuum company I've seen use this specific combination of sensors and technologies to date. The company Trifo presented their new flagship robot vacuum called Lucy, which is pretty interesting as it also has a front-mounted camera which uses AI to avoid the same kinds of obstacles that the 960 can. So in that sense, they're very similar, but there were a few notable differences. For example, the Trifo Lucy has a depth sensor as well as a camera mounted on the front of the robot, which it apparently uses for its navigation as well. So it's the first front-mounted camera I've seen used for navigation on a robot vacuum, as most V-SLAM or camera-based smart robot vacuums have their camera pointed at the ceiling. In any case, it seems to have the same app features like no-go lines and room select that are becoming standard with high-end robot vacuums, so it's going to be interesting to test Lucy's front-mounted dual camera navigation system when it is released. In addition to the AI-assisted obstacle avoidance, Lucy can also apparently see in the dark by combining its 1080p camera image and its depth sensor with a kind of night vision, which might be a better solution than Dyson's LED lights around the camera, so this could be a game changer for VSLAM bots if it works well. Trifo is also marketing Lucy as a home security system because it can use its camera along with its AI features much like a security camera where it can recognize people or pets. It also seems like it has a lot of power for a robot vacuum as their specs say it has 3,000 pascals of suction which is about 1,000 more than is typically seen with premium robot vacuums, and that's a trend I'll talk about later as well. Roborock had a big presence at CES. They were promoting their new S5 Max robot vacuum, which was just released and which we just did a review on. Also the S6 Pure robot vacuum, which is a more economical version of the S6. Basically, the S6 Pure will have a few less drop sensors and a few other minimal changes, but these changes were meant to get the price down, and the S6 Pure is scheduled to be released released later this year. I also heard that Roborock is planning on releasing app updates for multi-floor support, meaning that Roborock robot vacuums will be able to save multiple maps for multi-story homes in the near future, but I didn't get an exact date on when that would be released. But the big news from Roborock was that they were announcing their first cordless vacuum, the Roborock H6. This is a premium cordless vacuum that has a digital OLED display where you can change to one of three power settings and it gives accurate battery life numbers on each setting like the Dyson V11, which is cool. Also like the Dyson V11, it will be able to detect carpets and automatically boost the suction. So it seems like this is going to be one of only a few direct competitors with the premium Dyson cordless vacuums when it is released later this year. Some other selling points with the H6 are its battery life. Roborock says it can get 90 minutes of battery life on low power and 10 minutes on high. And those numbers are supposedly with the cleaner head attached. So I'll have to wait for the tests, but that would be a big deal as it would be best in class numbers for a cordless vacuum. They also put a lot of effort into promoting its filtration system, but basically it's a sealed system with HEPA filtration, which is common with these super premium cordless vacuums, but it's pretty rare below a certain price point. They're offering the H6 with multiple attachments, including two cleaner heads, a regular head for hard floors and carpets, and a soft roller head for optimal hard floor performance. Let's move on to the iLife exhibit. iLife made some major upgrades to all three of their robot vacuum series. iLife's premium robot vacuums, the A series, have mostly been v 
VSLAM to this point, VSLAM meaning that they use cameras, not LiDAR, to develop a map and navigate, but it appears they're moving to LiDAR navigation for their new flagship, the A10, which will be released later this year. The iLife A10 also has a patented vibrating mop head which can be attached, so it makes it a very interesting robot vacuum slash mop combo. iLife also updated their V series robot vacuum, which typically has a suction only port instead of a rotating brush on the bottom, so they're meant for hard floors and very low pile carpets only, but the upgrades with the new V9 are that it's a smart robot vacuum now using VSLAM, which I think is the first V series to have a camera, but interestingly it also has a whopping 4,000 pascals of suction, and I'm really excited to test this as that's a crazy high suction number, and I'm wondering if there's been a change in the robot vacuum motor technology or something. Also iLife updated its ShineBot with a camera as well, so the W450 is now a direct competitor with iRobot's BravaJet M6, and it's one of the only dedicated mopping robots with VSLAM besides the M6 that I know of. Moving on to Tinko. I love Tinko. They're at the forefront of innovation in many ways in the vacuum industry. I love their Pure One S12 cordless vacuum, which was featured in the CES exhibit as well, but the focus was on some of their newer products, like the new Floor One S3. So this is a floor washer, much like the Tinko iFloor or the Bissell Crosswave, but Tinko has incorporated their really cool infrared sensor, like on the S12, which was one of the reasons I love the S12 so much. Basically, the Floor One can sense how dirty the water is that you're picking up, and it increases the water solution mix and the spin of the brush and the suction power for more dirty floors, which could be really good for performance, and it's a great way to save battery life, presumably. They're also coming out with a brand new update to their previous cordless vacuums by adding their smart sensor to them, like the S11, which is pretty much the A11 with a smart sensor. So it's a much more economical way to get their best-in-class sensor on a cordless vacuum. They also announced a new hairdryer called the Moda One Focus, which actually seems really cool, but that's not really my area of expertise, so moving on. Some of the other things I saw were mostly general, like I saw some commercial robot vacuums, which I would love to test. They say they can have like five hours of runtime with two big slots for batteries. I saw a lot of window washing units, which I've been meaning to get into. There were also some interesting ideas, like this VSLAM robot that has a pop-up display, apparently just to display various emojis to give it character, I guess. So that's it for my CES 2020 trip. Be sure to subscribe to Vacuum Wars, check the links in the description, and thanks for watching.